going to go over the exam and so some people came in after I passed out the exam if we can pass over another one anybody else need an exam yes. everyone got one now okay so this exam has much in common with what we've done in the past. We've got a couple of questions to start off with that are the same as we've had before, and then a couple of others that have analysis in them that are different. So, Okay, so we want you to uh, do all four questions on this exam. There's two essay questions and there's two numerical questions. Uh, and we want you to create a PDF file and then submit that um, on Canvas for the end of the sem semester. So uh, I have posted the exam both in PDF form and also in uh, DocX form, so you can get the, the docx version of the exam here and so if you want to just get this file and then just substitute your answers in you can use this as a template you don't have to create another one um, so let's see where were we Okay, so there's a story here about this is a take-home exam. Uh, you're honour bound not to discuss this with your <coughs> colleagues. Um, yeah, I've, I've stated there that if, two, if I get the same answer from two different people, then it's exactly the same. You can tell pretty easily when you're grading it that that's the case. And I have to say, I haven't experienced that in this class um, for a long time. Uh, but anyway, you are supposed to do this by yourself. It's not something that's supposed to be a team effort. Um, it'll be due off. Uh, on Friday of next week uh, at midnight. So if you want to go out of town and just transmit your exam at some other point in time, that's fine. It, it, we don't, I don't care when it's turned in, just as long as it gets turned in by that day. Now, when, when we're asking these, uh, oh, and we've got uh, the HydroShare um, resource as well. Dr. Tubman, do you want to talk about that and uh, what we can do with that? Sure. So. Um if you want to, uh, if you click, can you click on that link? So that's the listing uh, that I generated um, from all of the resources that students put into HydroShare, and they used the keyword GISWR 2018. So if your uh, name doesn't appear there, then it means you didn't use that uh, keyword. Um, and I grouped it in the Utah State students and then the, uh, the Texas students. Um, and uh, basically, we've been following the, uh, the procedure where I asked first for the um, proposal to be uh, put in a resource with the name proposal.pdf, uh, then the interim report with the name interim report.pdf, and then the final report uh, as uh, I think uh, the name final project.pdf. Um, and uh, those are not there yet, and the presentation would be presentation.powerpoint. So we look at this one from uh, one of the students in Texas, and we're seeing uh, there's three files. By the time we get to uh, Saturday morning, we hope that there'll be the fourth uh, final progress report file there. And um, uh, this effectively serves as a complete record of uh, what's built up in the, in the term project. Um, you only really need to look at the final report because that's the, the work that's been done, but this serves as a record. And it's also sometimes really helpful to go back and look at the, the PowerPoint slides because uh, those sort of kind of give a visual uh, perspective what's, what's going on. Um, if any of you want to, and this is certainly not required, but it's an, it's an option, record the data along with uh, your uh, project you're welcome to uh, load it. I would suggest uh, 
create an additional folder inside your resource. You can uh, just click on there's a folder button when you're editing it. And then you can put the data in there, put uh, a readme.txt file, for example, that describes it. And then you have preserved your work for posterity. Um, so uh, you're, able to, um, you're able to do that. Um, and uh, in terms of doing uh, the, in, in terms of doing the questions in the uh, final exam, um, you should try and look at uh, papers both from the, from Utah State and from students in Texas. So I've also made a listing here, um, according to the schedule that we had, the presentations, and I've linked all the PowerPoint files here and all the updated reports here. And as the new papers are turned in, I will change the link here so that it's the final report and not just the, the update report that you submitted previously. So if you want to do it just looking at the reports for the Texas students, then you can just consult this page. Uh, so there's a couple of questions here, and each of them we want you to think about these things. Uh, knowledge of the facts. So make sure you lay out the facts of what has actually been done before you start giving opinions about what you think could have been done. Uh, so we're not, not expecting you to sort of give a speech about this is what I'm thinking today. We want you to be basing it on the facts that were uh, brought out in the term papers. Secondly, Thoughtful evaluation. How do you evaluate the advantages and limitations of the principles, methods, and data that have been used? How does the knowledge you've learned in this class relate to the world around us? So we're looking for you to reflect here. This is not just about, you know, how do I chunk out something on a computer? This is about how has my empowerment in this class by my capacity to be able to do analysis been enhanced? And how can I see the world and how can others see the world in more thoughtful ways than they could before? Um, so then the last part is effective use of maps. I mean, obviously, this is a mapping class. And so if you've got um, effective maps, then please highlight them. So in doing your answers, we want you to refer specifically to work presented in the term papers in this class. So that's be careful about that. So the first question says, compare and contrast two papers dealing with the same thing. So the idea is that. You just say, oh, here's a paper about this, and here's another paper about that, and I'm going to compare this with that, and I'm going to think about the differences between them. So neither of these should be your own paper. The papers that you choose can be from any of the participating universities, in other words, Utah and Texas. Um, summarize the contents, problem examined, method of analysis, results achieved, and compare and contrast the approaches to the problem that the two papers took. So which do you think is more effective? Which does a more effective job of communicating the results? Suppose you were doing this, how would you <coughs> learn from what you've read in these papers that would help you to uh, do a good job? Um, it may be helpful to prepare a table that summarizes key characteristics of these papers. Um, the, so this is a sort of compare one with another uh, kind of uh, question. Come up here, uh, Paris. There's a seat over here you can sit down. Mm -hmm. um, then the second paper is a little bit different, and it says, write an assessment of the utility of GIS in a particular subject area. So this is not just about comparing one paper with another. This is about saying, here's a survey of a field insofar as I've learned about it in this class. And we want you to select four papers that fall within the subject and present a critique. Now, what, what can be done? What can't be done? What, what are we still sort of at the limits? Now, where are the, um, uh, where, what advances do we need to make in the future? And so, again, you can use papers from either of the classes. And in this case, it is, I think, quite helpful to prepare a table that summarizes the key characteristics of the papers. Because when you're reading this, you know, you've got this long narrative. But with a table, you can say, OK, here's number one, here's number two, here's number three, here's number four. And here's key ideas, and here's how they were presented differently in each one. It helps to summarize uh, key aspects of that. I think that's actually quite a good uh, uh, suggestion in that light. So are there any questions about these? Yes. So for the projects you're picking for question two, are they going, they should still be related? The projects for, for question number two? 
So questions one and two can be on completely different subjects if you want. You shouldn't use the same papers in the two questions, but the ones in question two should be on the same idea. Yeah. So the, the intent is not to be talking so much about the papers, but about the nature of the subject that they illuminate. So, in, so what we're asking you to do is to say, use these papers as kind of a window. Uh, listen, you know, you've listened to the presentations. You know, there's limitations that have been pointed out. You know, that tells you something about, you know, we're at this point, um, but, you know, we, we, we would like to go here, but we aren't there yet. And just make an assessment like that about what the, the current state of knowledge is and the current state of data is, what the barriers are to progress. So these are the essay questions. Yes, Julian. As far as number two, if it's uh -huh. like a survey of the field, are we to assume that um, well, we've all done it, survey the field entirely within our papers? Like, and there's nothing external that could be true that's not included in... That's a, so, so the question is, can you include external knowledge? And by all means, I mean, yeah. So this is a, what we want you to do is to start with four papers that have been presented in this class and present facts that are derived from those papers. But then if you want to expound further than that, then you're welcome to do that. Um, is that the question or not? It's like, it's like this is the state of the field, but it's kind of four papers from, not from students. Uh -huh. not true. Okay? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good question. So the the question is, how you know, to what degree can you um, make an assessment of the state of the field from four term papers in the class? It's a common measure, right? Everyone has got the same basis. So really, um, it perhaps it's better to say the state of the field as depicted in these four papers, right? Rather than trying to say you know this is the global state of the field. However, you know if you through other means, you know more about the subject, by all means, you know, say so. Uh, I mean, that's uh, what we're trying to do here is to ask you to um, think about the role of GIS as a way of conveying knowledge in particular areas and what can be achieved in that and what you know, still remains to be accomplished. And, uh, and to have a point of origin in using these four papers to you know, start creating an argument about that. Any other questions? Dr. Tarberton, do you have any thoughts here? Um, probably not. I guess my uh, response to the last question would be, I mean, while it's maybe there's an opportunity to look at uh, look, look beyond, there's certainly not any uh, requirement or demand. And <laughs> I think the focus should mostly be on trying to assess the area um, based on what we're learning from, from the papers. I think it's, uh, it'd be tough to, or it'd be tough and it'd be a lot of work to kind of expect people to uh, look beyond uh, um, into the vast body of literature that's out there. But um, we want people to try and use what we've been able to generate collectively in this class from sort of 45 or so students in both institutions and uh, Kind of synthesize that information. Yes. Um, uh, I don't know. Hopefully that's not contradictory. <laughs> no, that's great. No, thank you, Jill. Um, for, for number two, mm -hmm. um, are we, I have a, kind of a couple of questions, um, are we able to select our own as one of those four papers? Um, our own subject in a wider area and then separately um, do the, of the four we select, if we see a linkage that it's like divided across a couple of different subjects that you would separate it out in the presentations, is that okay, or should it be the same kind of presentation? Yeah, I, I think for the second question, it's okay mm -hmm. to select one of your, your your own paper. I mean, we've precluded that here because then you're comparing yourself to somebody else, right? But in this case, you're saying here's a field, and I contributed to that field, and I want to say something about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is that adequate? Is that what you need to know? Um, that, that's great. But then mm -hmm. for the, the other question, like if, um, if we see a similarity with one of the ones we want to compare, but it was presented on another day, or like you put it in a different category? Oh, that, yeah, those categories don't mean anything. Yeah, okay. yeah th those categories were just to uh, uh, arrange in groups that have rough thematic content. 
so that we could randomly choose who gets to present when. That, but you can choose anything. I mean, those, 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 don't pay any attention to those descriptors. Yes? Can we include images from other people's papers? In of our course. Responses? Of course, yes. If you think it's particularly effective, why not? Yeah. Um, that's one of the things we're doing here. Any other questions? Questions from, ah, yes. Mm -hmm. um, if we include pictures or tables, mm -hmm. does that affect how long, like, the It's two pages. pages. You got two pages. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't start rambling on. No. <laughs> I'm going to grade two pages. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I would say it's probably better to, uh, rather than include a picture, because you could uh, do three pictures from other people and have one and a half pages and only think you have to write half a page. <laughs> and that's not going to be good enough. So mention that uh, so-and-so's figure four is a good illustration of this without necessarily cutting and pasting it in. And then uh, we, we've got access to the other papers so we can go look at that. That's the strategy I would take anyway. Okay. Yeah. There's a question here, go ahead. We need to worry about citing papers for this or since this is part of an assignment, can we assume that you guys know the papers we're referencing as long as we put the author's name in? Um, like, how do you want to deal with us citing the work of other students? Um, I, I mean, I would say uh, at the beginning of your, or some, somewhere close to the beginning of your response, you should say you chose the papers by Jones uh, at Utah State and uh, Davis at Texas. And um, you could just put Jones and Davis and then maybe at the end, uh, but I would, I would not take, I mean, probably do it, prop, do it properly in a bibliographic way. So you would then have Jones 2018 uh, and give the title and give the URL. Um, but that can be outside of the two pages. That would be the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you, through that question, we've kind of extended the, <laughs> I mean, that would be the formal way to do it that would not be wrong. Okay. Oops, our department's just arrived here, so uh, let's continue on with the rest of the exam review. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, is, a, is, a, is, there a, is there a cake or something? Or? Okay, cookies for the class, look at that. Okay, so there are two numerical questions here. One of them is, uh, dealing with the population of Austin. So what you see here is a map of the center of Austin. The purple uh, area there is the extent of the Austin East topographic map, 1 to 24,000 scale, and the brown lines are the census blocks that are in this area. And the attribute table that you see here is the attributes of the census, and the one that says POP10 is the population in that census block in 2010. So we have a series of questions here that ask you to do some hand calculations that uh, follow the extent of this map. So I've given you here the coordinate on the lower left side and asked you to calculate what the coordinates are for points B, C, and D, and then to calculate what the lengths of the sides A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A are, and what the area A, B, C, D is. So this is something that you've done before. You've got a radius of the Earth and so on. Then uh, there's an area, this um, is contained in a geodatabase, which is accessible at the point where I've linked it here, and that contains that same feature class, and so you're asked to compare the area that you calculated yourself with that, which is, is contained inside the GIS. And then there's an attribute POP10 in the feature class that's the population, and you're asked to make a map about that. Uh, then to find the census block within the map that has the highest population. And I'll give you a hint, it's on our campus, and uh, there's a reason why it has the highest population. <coughs> and if you look through onto the background map, when you get to that point, you'll see some reasons why that census block has the highest population in the, uh, in the whole area. So, uh, when we, so then we want you to calculate the population density in persons per hectare, the coordinate system here is the Universal Transverse Mercator System, so the map units are in meters. And then we want you to create a map of population density and compare the two and say, you know, which is more effective at showing 
and where people live in, in Austin. Um, and then the last question is to calculate the population within the extent of the Austin East map. So in other words, we're asking you to say how many people live inside the purple box given the estimates of the people in the census blocks that are in this area. And you've got to be a little bit careful about doing that because uh, when you take the, the purple line, it cuts through the middle of the census blocks and you, there's some interesting things that can happen there if you're not careful about what you do. So that's the first uh, question. Are there questions about that? Yes? Um, do you want the answers to be tied or could we do like the hand calculations on paper and scan our board? Yeah, so when it says fill in the table, please yeah, type it in because we can, I've given you the Word doc. Right. Uh, but if you want it, for example, for the um, calculation about the fee, cost of the delta land and all that, you want to do that by hand and just paste it in, that's fine. Or if you want to type it in, that's fine too. Any other questions? Can we make a show the calculation? Yes. The yes. So it says here, show and explain the work done performing its calculation. Don't just state the results. Sometimes people just say, oh, voila, you know, I got an answer. And you have no idea how they got the answer. So yes, we want you to explain how you did them. So for example, you might take the Word document and then just open it up and just insert your stuff at each point here and then just make that your solution. Any other questions about that? And the final question is a hydrology question. Dr. Tarleton, do you want to talk about this one? Sure. So um, what we've shown there is uh, Waller Creek, which uh, I don't know very much about, but I was looking at uh, a creek that was somewhere near UT Austin uh, and found that it runs uh, through campus and it enters the Colorado River. So uh, we've shown there the, um, the NHD uh, flow lines from the high resolution NHD data set, as well as a watershed boundary. And I've sort of indicated the two source uh, points on, this, uh, on those streams and the junction and then the uh, outlet into uh, the Colorado River and uh, asked uh, probably if you s just scroll down some basic information to uh, to figure out, uh, obtain the drainage area upstream of point <coughs> zero. That's the sort of thing we've done a number of different ways in the class, and you can uh, pick a way that you think is appropriate uh, and uh, do that. To prepare a map uh, showing uh, the streams as well as the topography, we've provided the data uh, of the streams as well as the data of the, um, the digital elevation model. We have not provided the data of the watershed boundary because that's something that you'll have to uh, figure out how to get yourself from what we've learned and, uh, and put that on the map um, and produce a nice map as a layout. So here you can show your uh, skills in producing maps, labeling them so that everything's uh, proper and complete. Um, then I've asked for some of the quantitative things we've been looking for, the length of each of those uh, sections of stream, uh, the slope of each of those sections of stream uh, and also the average slope uh, within the watershed as you delineate it. Um, those are the sort of things that sometimes go into hydrologic models. Um, so, uh, and again, don't just uh, give the answers, explain what you did to get the answers. Okay, any questions about that? Yes, Jill. Okay. Another question about the first two. Mm -hmm. um, you said the four pages total, but is that single or double space? It's whatever you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I've graded this lots of times, Jill, and uh, and there are variations. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Exhausted students use double space, and students who are really into this use single, and yeah, some use <laughs> one and a half, and yeah, you you, you grade it accordingly. Uh, any other questions? Okay, well, let me introduce our department chairman, uh, Bob Gilbert. And yeah, so you are, are here for a very special day. This is the last class that Dr. Maynard will teach at the University of Texas, at least as a full-time faculty member. Mm -hmm. So you've been here for 37 years. He's taught hundreds of classes and thousands of undergraduate and graduate students, and you all are here for the very last class. So David, 
on behalf of the department, on behalf of the Cockrell School and the university, we want to thank you and we want to celebrate everything that you've done for our students. So okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're thinking you all might want to sign as his last class ever. Uh, and this has pictures from David's career and also from the banquet that we had celebrating David's career here. So you can see what young David looked like. <laughs> <laughs> how David has progressed over <laughs> And David, I wore a sweater on your behalf. OK. So <laughs> but congratulations, and thank you so much. OK, well, you're very welcome. And, and uh, well, it's always a thrill to, um, to be able to have memories of things. And, and I really appreciate the, the book that you've got. And there are messages here that were sent into a website that, were, um, that was put up when I had a retirement event earlier this semester. Actually, I've got this presentation. Let me. Let me. <laughs> while we're doing that, we've got cookies as got well. Cookies. Maybe we can pass the cookies around. Okay, so. Be okay sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, by all means, let's have some cookies. And. Um, <laughs> sure. Sure. This is going to automatically advance or not. <laughs> How do you make this automatically go forward? I forgot how to do it. So five minutes after you finish, you forget how to use pop? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just figured this out. Oh, I never mind. Okay. Well, I would like to get a picture of the students from Utah and Dr. Tarverton together. So, can you guys gather as you did at the beginning of class, and I'll take your picture virtually here. Okay. Why don't we all just stand up and? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come a, come a bit closer together. <laughs> okay, so. I noticed in our classroom we've got very interesting movable desks. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. It's been. So let me, let me just say a few words here. So I, I've been doing this class together with Dr. Tarotin for 19 years, and that's been a wonderful uh, experience. Uh, it's been an inspiration to me to teach with him, and as you can see from the class, we've interacted um, to try to mutually support one another. I want also to introduce my wife. Uh, yeah, who's here. So, this is when I met my wife. I was at the University of Canterbury. Well, let, we'll go back to the beginning. I'll, I'll give you a little <laughs> quick story. Okay, so this is me when I came to UT Austin. And, well, this is me in a, year, a couple of years ago. Uh, I came here in 1981. Uh, can you go to the next one, Bob? So this is me at the beginning, right? I was, yeah, I was 10 years old when I took this, uh, that, that picture was taken. And then uh, I was at college, or well, high school they call it there, and then this is my family. I have a couple of younger sisters now. Keep going. And then I went to the University of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand. I got a bachelor's degree in agricultural engineering. And then I met uh, my wife. Yeah, this is Helen. So when she, I met her when she was 17. Uh, we went to our first ball together 50 years ago next year. It's 1969, and we were married in 1973. And then we came immediately to the University of Illinois to, for graduate school, four days later. So uh, <laughs> this is my advisor, Ben T. Chow. He was the famous hydrologist at the University of Illinois. And I got a master's and PhD at Illinois, and Helen got a master's degree. And we worked at this lab, the Hydrosystems Lab, which is the hydrology program at, at Illinois. 
And can you go on? While we were there, we were house parents to a student house. So Helen was house mother, I was house father to 30 undergraduate women, and we all lived together in this house. It was kind of an interesting experience. <laughs> Then I went to the, University, to the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis in Austria, in Vienna. And I uh, thought, you know, we've been in the new world for a while, let's go to the old world. And uh, I worked in, on the Eastern, Eastern Europe with a colleague from uh, Bulgaria, Ilya Gawewski, and from Poland, uh, Janusz Kindler, and at this palace of the Habsburg Empire. Now, this is the country palace of the Habsburg Empire. They have the Schönbrunn as their town palace, and this is the country palace. So. Yeah, when the, when the Cold War was on and Henry Kissinger was Secretary of State and so on, we were here. And uh, yeah, we saw interesting things. Then we went back to New Zealand and we got, uh, our children were born. We have two daughters, Linda and Amy. So there's Linda when she was just six weeks old, her first smile. And this is Amy uh, when uh, she was a couple of years old. And we came to tax. Well, here's Helen when she was having, uh, she's pregnant. <laughs> uh, I worked at a scientist of so the Ministry of Works and Development. Can you go on, Bob? And this is Helen's mother and father who really supported us wonderfully through all these years. They came here to America about five times and uh, Helen's dad was a fisherman. Here's Helen's mum in the blue bonnets. So they were like Velcro and our, our daughters like Velcro with Helen. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we came to Texas. So I was initially uh, one year at the University of Texas, at Texas A&M University as a visiting assistant professor and then I came to UT Austin. So here our children are, are just little and they're getting to be longhorns. Um, and then, yeah, being a dad, right? So you've got to look after things. And my wife went to medical school in 1984. And so she was yeah, four years in medical school and I looked after the children. I was Mr. Mom for four years. And while I was assistant professor, actually, that was an <laughs> interesting time. <laughs> Uh, now I'm a grandfather, so I have three grandsons, and uh, you see them here, and this is my daughters are growing up now, they have husbands, and so we have a larger family. Uh, keep going, Bob. Yes, yeah, so this is our faculty as it was when I first came here. Well, there's a common theme here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, What's changed? Yes, uh, obviously we've got lots more women here in the faculty and <laughs> teaching now than we had then. Keep going. I thought you might be sure. uh, <laughs> so on our 25th wedding anniversary, we took a few pictures. So these are some of the faculty that you may know. There's Dr. Lawler, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kerry Kinney here, and Hilary Hart, Randy Charbonneau, you know, as we were, uh, well, nearly 25 years ago now, 20 years ago. So this is my wife and in a very nice dress from the uh, 25th wedding in Redford. <laughs> okay, keep going. Then, you know, being a teacher, so this is the part that you know better, you know, hand waving, flood damage, etc. <laughs> um, I did a handbook of hydrology in the uh, early 1990s and it was translated into Chinese. A couple of years ago, I met the, uh, I met the person who uh, translated it in Beijing. Uh, he's now the president of the Nanjing Hydraulic Research Institute. So it's kind of a you know, neat thing to feel that your knowledge is translated across the world. And well, National Water Model, you've seen this before, but I feel like this is one of the major contributions of my work. And uh, I've been taking students to the Ezra User Conference in San Diego for a long time. And so these are some students from past years and they would uh, get up to all kinds of activities. And <laughs> this is a visit to Tijuana, yeah. And, <laughs> Uh, seraphing and uh, other kind of stuff. Uh, so this was kind of a group activity that a lot of people enjoyed and I enjoyed you know, sort of a fellowship activity with grad students at that conference for many years. And this is some of the same uh, students who, these, all, these ones all work with Esri except for uh, Jing who's just graduated. And here's graduating, and then here. some others graduating. <laughs> um, and here I'm visiting students, you know, who I ha whom I've had in the past, and so on. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was elected to the National Academy of Engineering, which was uh, uh, a very fulfilling. Big deal, very uh, big deal. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that was really, um, uh, yeah, if you can go back, Bob, was really uh, important to me was we had a party, and everybody from the EWRE faculty came, and all their spouses, and and I. So the last slide in this was to 
acknowledge my colleagues at the EWRE faculty that we you know we've just been friends together for all these years and it's yeah, it's more than just a job you know these are these are colleagues and friends and we have a community here that's been a very positive and supportive community and that's made my work as a professor you know, much more interesting and uh, um, a warm experience than it would otherwise have been so as you can imagine this is uh, uh, kind of a special day for me this is the last day that I'll be teaching at UT Austin but uh, it's it's a happy day as well you know I can look back at all the great times that I've had in the past and all the wonderful people that I've worked with and you know colleagues in the faculty all the students that I've had and uh, and then my life's been an adventure what can you say you, you can't ask for much more than your, that your life's an adventure and I'm sure that uh, with my wife and you know we're gonna have a celebration this afternoon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna have lots more time to do fun things in the future so thank you very much I appreciate you being with us this semester and good luck for the future Okay. If we're in the picture there or not, but I'll stand here just to catch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Not normally, no, no. <laughs> so, and now it's time to say goodbye to all our company. G I S M O D E L I N G G I S Modeling. G I S Modeling. Forever we will hold their banners high. Hi, hi, hi. Rest of Victor, Victor, rest of all the same to me. E I S M O D E L I N G. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. Good luck with the exam. Good luck with the. Uh, uh, good luck with your life, yeah. <laughs> Ah. Ah. Right, you're a good sport as always. Ah, okay, let's go in here. No, I, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take it with I'd like to look at it.